So who talks first? You talk first, I talk first? First, we lasered the design out of eighth inch birch plywood on the Glowforge. The design that we were cutting was illustration that I did of the, these are the water features that you're seeing here. I used the actual map of Fall River and then I exaggerated the streets and the water features to give it a more illustrative style, uh, make it a little more visually interesting. And we did this first on birch plywood for the water features so we can paint and color them in, which you'll see in a little bit here. But what I'm doing right now is cleaning up the birch after the laser burned it, and also it skipped in a couple places, so I just needed to clean up those uh, contour lines. And you're cutting it here because the Glowforge actually couldn't... It was easier for you to hand cut it than it was to get the Glowforge to cut through because this wood is actually pretty thick. Yes. And we had to do it in two pieces because the Glowforge can only do so wide. So to get the three inch, three inch, three foot height that we wanted, we had to do it in two separate pieces. You'll see that on the land also, it was two separate pieces. So here you can see the width we can do in the Glowforge and the length we can pull it all the way through. So we are starting to do the map on a piece of walnut, which is 20 inches by four feet. This is the land bit, obviously, with the streets. And so while we were doing this on our first pass on this, and it's our first pass because right about here, you can see that I bumped the laser and it caused a skip and we could not fix that. Had to run it again. And this is a nine hour print per piece. And there's two pieces. Right here, just fixing up a couple of the letters that came off during sanding with some super glue and some additional pieces that I had lasered out. So you can see the Taunton River, the Tauntaun River. Ah, ah, ah. I see what you did there. Um, and now uh, I get to do the painting part. We wanted to definitely paint the water because the rest of the map is gonna be in different shades of wood, which looks awesome, but it needed something to kind of give it a little bit of pop. So we, again, illustrated the water so it had a little bit more of a... Um, watery. A watery feel, dimensional, three-dimensional, not three-dimensional, just regular dimension, extra dimension, bonus dimension. Yeah, so we got to to try different colors of blue and just, and just enjoy the satisfactoriness as the water just seeps into the wood. Add a little happy pond right here. <laughs> just like Bob Ross. <laughs> but yes, it's very satisfying. And we just did, had to do a lot of layers because again, the water colors seeped into the wood. So even though it went on pretty heavy, it started getting, looking a little thin, so. Layers, like an onion. Thank you, Shrek. And now after laserifying the map, we needed to peel off the protective paper layer, which saved a lot of that burning you can see on the paper. And this took a lot of work, so we had to do a lot of manual peeling and use a lot of denatured alcohol to pull all this off and clean up the map and do some scraping and picking and poking and prodding to get it to where it needed to be. And also had a little chip in the corner here, which I fixed with just some super glue and just took 53 tries to get it on there in the right spot and not stick to my finger. And then here, like we said, the water was two pieces and so was the land. And it fits together like a glove. We made sure that the seam between the two pieces was not a straight horizontal line, it was fitted together along the streets. And this is going to be mounted on the wall inside Viva Fall River. So we need, we were going to hang it with a French cleat because it was also just a big giant piece. It was four foot by three foot. So it was gonna weigh a lot too. So we wanna make sure it was well supported and it wouldn't fall off easy. So we used a French cleat for this. Then this is gonna be mounted on here like this. This is gonna go on the wall. That's how it's gonna go. That look good. Mm. Writing that that just stays along the edge. Yeah. So it keeps it the same distance all the way across. Yeah. He's using a center finder ruler, which you will know because it says center finding ruler. Center finding rule. Twenty four inches. That's what it says. He's using that. I know that because that's what it's labeled. Not yet, you're gonna be screwing it, aren't you? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> any surface like that. I didn't go all the way through the cardboard. <laughs> And what is this that you were applying glue to? Uh, little blocks. <laughs> that is a literal answer, yes. <laughs> Making extra bumpers. This is the cleat. This is the bumper to support the bottom. And now we need additional bumpers to support the rest of this hulking beast in all of its parts. So here we're gonna be using Thixo Epoxy to bond the front of the map and the back of the map together. So before we do that, we are sanding the surfaces down to give it a much rougher surface for the epoxy to actually adhere to and really hold these together. Now we're applying the Thixo and we're using a Bondo spreader to thin it out. So we didn't wanna go right up to the edges. We wanted to keep it in the middle, but we wanted an even layer. And here you can see us putting on these two large sections of the front of the map to the back of the map. And we had it overlaid so that or we had it aligned so that the seam of the land was over the seam of the water so they could help hold each other together. Additionally, and you'll see this in a moment here, we also made icons of notable Fall River locations. And by we, I mean, and my wife here. And she or she, you hear you, she, she here, you can see her. <laughs> in my pajamas. In her pajamas placing these on the map where they should go. Hey, at least I've got sneakers, so I was protecting myself from the, you know, splinters and stuff, so at least that's safe. This is good. That pool table has a lot of splinters. There's a piece of plywood on there. Oh, right. And because we had the two different seams, even though they were offset from each other, we're adding a, just another piece of wood to help strengthen that joint between them and help keep it solid. So just cutting out another piece of eighth inch fly, flywood. 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 Fly. And, and here's a tour of our house too. Yes. Using some Thixo epoxy to put that on there. And also while we're doing this, just getting around the edges between the front of the map and the back of the map, just for more adhesion. And then I got to dance. Apparently the Thixo needed to be shook. shook yes, shooken, we needed to make shaken. it less Thixy. Less, less thick, see, yes. We need to make the house ion varnish, which we're using, less thick or shaken or stirred or, I don't. That was definitely shaken. Shaken. So we went with Total Boat house ion varnish for this because it has UV protection. Um, this is going to be in a store on the wall and it might get bumped and scuffed and stuff like that. So it's also very rugged. So we loaded it up. Yes. I also had the great idea of thinking that, you know, it's super clear and looks cool, so it might give the, you know, appearance of, of water. Uh, but apparently if you apply it too thick, it cracks. So we had to sand it down quite a bit, had to repaint in a couple of areas, but uh, it, it, it worked out okay. Yep. And we also sanded between coats so that each additional layer that we added also had like enough bite onto the map itself so that it didn't flake or peel off anymore over its lifespan. Pretty good, I would say. Look at that texture, man. Look at that texture. Very nice. <laughs> it's just like driving down the streets of Fall River. And it's shiny. Just like driving over the Braga. Just like it. Braga. Less traffic, though. Braga. This is actually how fast my wife drives. <laughs> Actually over the Braga. Over the Braga. Final destination. Incoming. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's like, it's like the little one, but bigger. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like Daddy, I want to go get the baby. Like, oh yes. Yeah, guys, like, you like... The pictures, the, the drawings, everything was executed, like... It's, no, that's a good thing. Okay, good, good. Best kind of surprise. I love, love, love. Awesome. Beautiful. 
Okay, and here we are figuring out placement, where we're going to put it on the wall. And measuring out where the French cleat is going to go. And here we are, mounting it to the wall. And then my <laughs> wife goes and hides behind the shelves, which also have to be covered with chocolate-covered Swedish fish. I think she was investigating. <laughs> I was trying to get a cool angle. It worked better in my head than in real life. Oh, Unlike the map, which definitely worked better in real life than it did in my head. And then all of the space in here, all the extra space, the idea was to put little green icons to show where different businesses are located in Fall River. That looks ridiculously awesome. That's the entire point of the map, was not just to show Fall River, but to show where all the local businesses are located. So we designed all these little green icons that have QR codes on them so you could scan them to go to the websites of the businesses. We actually ran out of some space because the number of businesses that Viva wanted to include couldn't all actually fit on the map. The map would have had to have been ridiculously bigger. So that's why we made this side piece over here as an extra placement for those icons. Thank, Thank you. you, Viva! Thank you, Viva! Thank you for watching. Yes. Right, see you.